Welcome to our sixth video with data structures and algorithms. And we're going to talk about um, insertion, the running time of insertion sort. So in the previous videos, we talked about the algorithm and the idea. Now we're going to find out how long uh, the, this algorithm takes in the best case, in the worst case, and the average case. So what we're going to have to do when we try to compute this is we need to count how many times each one of these lines gets run. Oops, I wasn't supposed to do that. And once we can count those things, which we will do here, I'll explain what these are, we're going to multiply each one of these by some constant, and that constant is basically the actual physical time that it would take for that line. I mean, it's going to be different for, uh, for different computers and different hardware. So here we go. Now, in a for loop, uh, when, we're, when we're iterating over an array, here we're going to iterate uh, for n times. Now, why is it n times? Now, n, n is the number of elements in the array. And we have a little example over here to show us, right? At n for us is equal to 4. Now, that might be a little odd because we're starting from 2, and you think we're, we'll go to 3, and we'll go to 4, and we'll be done. Well, that's true. We will be done sorting the array, but somehow we have to exit this loop. We have to have something that fails, something that says, wait a minute, j is not, is no longer in the length, you know, of a. It is, it is greater than the length of a. So now we jump out and we're, and we're done. So our failing case, we have to have some sort of case that fails to jump out of this, would be out here. So that would be one more than the length, but we're starting, uh, from one inside the array, if you will. So we end up equaling the actual length of the array. So we will call this line n times. Now, on to the next line. Any directly, any line that is directly inside of the loop will get called one less times because it will not, when we're out here in the for loop, we're actually jumping out, so we will never actually call these. So we end up going inside the loop and we check all these. That's once, right? Again, twice, three times. For us, that's three, right? N minus one is equal to three for us. And this time, we will not jump at it. So only three times. So N minus one for us there. Now, we have this other, we have a loop inside of a loop. And this is where things can get a little confusing, but maybe we can clear that up. So we have a T sub J here. This is the number of while loop tests. Okay, the number of times that this while loop will do a test. Now remember, just like this for loop, just like any loop, okay, we do a, we have to have some sort of a failing test at the end to get out of it. So one of these tests has to fail. But we have to have at least one test because otherwise we don't need a loop. If we don't need a test, we don't need a loop. So here, um, for this says from j equals 2, right, to n, obviously, to 4, we're going to check. Now, let's say that we had a best case scenario here, and our uh, list is already sorted. Let's do 10, 11, 12 and 13. Okay, it's already sorted, but we come in here and we try to sort an already sorted list anyways. So in the best case scenario, this will get called n minus 1 times. Now why is that? Well, if we're at j equals 2, then we're testing this one, right? And it fails automatically because 10 is not greater than 11. So we don't jump into here and we're done. So that was one time. Now we'll change colors. Now we're at j equals 3, and we're going to test 11. Is 11 greater than 12? No, it is not. So we're done. We don't test this anymore, and we go on to the next one. Now we're at j equals 4, which is n. We're at the last one. And we'll change colors again. We'll say this one. And we look at 12. We say, is 12 greater than our key value? And the answer is no, obviously. So we're done with that and we jump out, and then <clears throat> we're out here, 
for our j value, so we jump out and we're done. That, again, is n minus 1. That is the best case scenario. So how many times did we test this, do we do this test for each j value? Well, we only tested it once. You can see we have three different colors here. We, that was all the different ones. So t sub j in the best case scenario is 1. So the sum, right, of 1, right, plus uh, we have the second one, plus 1, plus, and then we had our third scenario, plus 1 time. That's 3. That's n minus 1, n minus 1 times for this example. Okay? That's the best case scenario. What about the worst case scenario? Let's see if we can do that. Now, um, the worst case scenario would be backwards, right? So 13, 12, 11, and 10. Now, <clears throat> during our first iteration, right, <clears throat> we're going to check this, right, and it is greater than, so we move it down and do our thing, and then we check here, okay? For that iteration, right, we checked two, we had to check two things, right? We're outside of the loop this time, so that's our failing case, so we're done. So we checked twice for that, right? Now let's go on to our next j value, j equals 3. Right, right here, and we're going to check this. Now, this should be 13 in this case because we already sorted that one. So um, maybe I should just write that. So this would be 13 now, and this would be 12. Okay. So in here, we're going to check tw uh, 13. Is 13 greater than that? Yes. So we go down one, right? We check to see if 12 is greater than 11, which it is. So we go down one again. And here we have, uh, now we break out of the loop when we get to the end. So we tested three times that time, right? So this is what we're summing up. That's why we have these addition signs here. And then our last one, okay, I'll just do this, right? So now we should have 13, 12, and 11. You can't see any of those, but whatever. Okay, what other thing? So now we check to see this one. Right? Is 13 greater than 10? Yes. Is 12 greater than 10? Yes. Is 11 greater than 10? Yes. Here we are. Okay. Now we're out of the loop, so that's our exit condition, and that's how many times we called this. That's four times that we called this for that for that J. So <clears throat> now we're saying that was each that was each T sub J. So now we're summing each of those up because we're saying from j equals 2, okay, from this one, on, we need to sum up how many times we had to test the loop in each iteration. So the first time we went through the for loop, we did two tests. The second time we went through the for loop, we did three tests. And the uh, third, no, the fourth time we went through the, the for loop, we did four tests in here. We did this loop four times. So in the worst case scenario, if n is 4, then our sum, right, was equal to, well, 7, 8, 9. So we did 9 tests in the worst case with 4. So uh, these numbers really don't matter. What really matters is that each time we had to test this loop, we have to add that up because we go through here and then we test and we test and we test and we test. We have to that's a, the, the, a count. We have to uh, accommodate for that count. Then we go again through the next loop, and we test, and we test, and we test. So there's even more here. It's not just one test always. So this is the sum of the number of tests, right? We had two tests here. We had three tests here. We had four tests there. And it would go on and on and on as our n grows. So that is uh, what that kind of means. I hope that helps out with that one. And then obviously each one in here, every one inside, is just one less because out here we have to have some sort of failing case right here to get out of it. So these would be one less than those. All right, so we'll continue with this and we'll do some uh, examples in the next videos.